Well, yeah. quite frankly, I wasn't bad in bed. Now that I can. <laughs> of course, it was television sex. But here's the thing: she brings her. She has a. I, I'm very close with her family. Yeah. She's a brilliant husband, Chris Guest, and right. a beautiful daughter. And so, how, she, how old's her daughter? About three, three and a half. So she brings her daughter to rehearsal. Now it's all acting, but still, I'm in bed. I'm yeah. practically naked. You know what I mean? So her daughter is like a foot away from me. So we had to have this passionate makeout scene. And her little daughter is sitting there. I feel like it's. I feel like like I feel like Hitler, quite yeah. frankly. <laughs> so I had this like every time we would stop kissing, I would do this like obligatory puppet show. Hi, this, my name is Gun. <laughs> and it was it was the worst rehearsal ever. So Jamie, don't bring her to the rehearsals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now now, how has being on the program and the success of the program and your own success, independent of the show, how? How is that affecting your life? I'm hoping that things are better for you now. No, I feel a little bit. I, you know, I still suffer from you know a little low self-esteem. I always had it. I don't think you always. I don't think. I think you 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 raise a certain way. I, I mean, I would have been better off raised by wolves, quite frankly. <laughs> not, I think. But I mean, like early on. I mean, like the books they made me read. My family, uh, you know, like, like, maybe it was a bad Seuss book, and he's a G, a nut in a rut. I read yeah, that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> You know, the cold sore that could, that kind of thing. The cold sore that could. Yeah. And then we had like one you know of those things that you shake in the snow thing. Yeah, yeah. We had Ar paperwork. Armageddon. It was sort of sad, you know. <laughs> and we had like anyway. So I, but my things are good. So I'm. But are you getting beyond that now? I, I'm trying to pass through that, and I'm uh, I, and I'm actually meeting some interesting people. This is a real. I hate to use the word trip at dates, but we're the same. Mm -hmm. We're 43. You can right. say this. Who sure. cares anymore? You know, as long yeah. as we're alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I'm sitting at this party. The other night, I go to this party. And I'm, I'm name dropping. But look, I live out in Hollywood, and I'm old. So bear with me. <laughs> Penny Marshall had a birthday party with Carrie Fisher. I go. All right. Penny Marshall, Carrie Fisher. Right. Sure. That's so a pretty I, good invitation. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? You know, yeah. you're gonna, who knows you, who you're going to meet, you yeah. know? So I go there, and I don't know who I'm going to meet. I get... And I say this affectionately, stuck in the middle of a conversation for the whole night with all these starlets roaming around. Harvey Keitel and David Bowie, yes. both of whom are the idol. Wow. But yeah. what a, it was like Dolby psychosis. I had no <laughs> idea what it was. First of all, let me just talk about Bowie. I mean, it's really when someone who you grow up loving and idolizing knows sure. your work, it's such yeah. one of the few treats, you know? Um, so anyway, so he's not dressed like, you know, Ziggy or anything. He, you know, he looks like Arthur Godfrey's nephew, for crying out loud. <laughs> he had, like, you know, pants on, a little shirt. I'm like, you know, I had to look literally like a psycho. Dave? Is that you, Dave? And so I said, here's a thousand bucks. Get a cape. Do something with yourself. You know, because I, you know, put some mascara on. It scared me a little bit. And then we start talking about art, but Keitel, well, I found out, and this does not matter to me at all, I think he's Jewish. Uh -huh. But he, you know, he's, and I say this, again, I'm not articulate enough to, but I, you know, like, and Goodfellas, those kind of, you know, like Scovino and, and De Niro and Pesci, they seem to have this kind of rapport and they have this street kind of yeah. rap, you know? Yeah, they... And they're brilliant, and I idolize these guys. But sitting with Keitel, everything is like, I mean, it's un I mean we're having hors d'oeuvres. It was a Hollywood party. It was great. The food was a little unusual, to put it mildly. I, I couldn't recognize half the appetizers. <laughs> so Keitel would say to me, are you going to eat that, Doc? He says, do you think you should have a duck? Don't you know that ducks and elks, mate? Don't you know that? I mean, he had like all, it was like sitting, it was like, it was sitting, it was like mean streets, you yeah, know, yeah. while I was eating, you know? <laughs> and I love, you know, I, you, you see uh, that the film, the De Niro film, the Scorsese film yet, Goodfellas? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was like this. <laughs> no, wait a minute, are, are you talking to me or is, or is uh, he, he ooh, talking to you? That was your first impression. You sort of did a De Niro, yeah, it was a little like Bob Keisha. I'm, I'm confused because... It, no, I was just thinking about... Because I was feeling like I was in that movie with Keitel. So you said that to him, or no, he no, said, Dave, you said it to me? No, please, it doesn't matter. The whole thing doesn't matter. So you asked me if I've... If I've go, let's get away from this whole... Anyway, so I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to learn from... I'm 43 now, I'm right, not married. Right. I'm single, I'm just trying... I don't want to make any... I have trouble getting out of relationships. I don't know about you, but I just... Uh, I'm going to go slow. I think that's one thing that even Manson, who I dis was despicable, yeah. would probably say in, in the only clear moment, if you break up with somebody, go slow. You know, I think oh, yeah, he would say that. So I've been like, you know, what's that? Uh oh, I know it's over, It's time man. to go, and then we win. And, you know, all right. It's time to go. I'm yeah. pleased that I have to go and I haven't started yet. I'm pleased. I don't know. It seemed to me like you well, got I a pretty good fun. start. I love yeah. you. You're the only show I do. You know, you and Johnny. Yeah. But I always come here and I then we screw around. Ah, and excuse me. Wait pay. a minute. How much time did he have? All right. Oh, Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. All right. Then I won't tell you about the... I won't tell you the Yoko story that I have. Fine. <laughs> Not two. Wait a minute. No, no, no. no, no. 
Yeah. I have a Robert Merrill thing that I'm like, forget it. I'll save it for you. I'll come yeah, back but in no, 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 nine. Did you want more than nine minutes? I don't do, I'm not just saying I deserve more. It's just that I love the show and I come 3,000 miles and it just flies by. You know, me. if I were you, what I would do, I would go back to the dressing room and try to pay Mary Lou Henner and buy her spot. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's great to be here. <laughs> Richard Lewis, ladies and gentlemen.